In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In this Holy Gospel, our Lord says, on this Feast of St. Paschal Balin, here on... uh, a uh, beautiful sunny day in Toronto, and I'm sure you uh, people of Canada are very grateful winter has passed and summer is nigh, and uh, it was a long winter. God is certainly punishing the Western nations. He's knocking at the door of the Western nations. It's, there's been continual natural catastrophes on the increase in the past couple years. And it's ever, it's always something going on worldwide. And God is knocking at the door because the laws of God are being ignored and the nations are turning more and more from Him. And when these natural catastrophes strike, whether it be earthquakes, sinking holes in Florida, swallowing whole houses, one man disappeared and he was in his room sleeping and he disappeared, he was gone and tornadoes striking, and fires in California, and floods everywhere, and um, typhoons. And God, as says St. Saint, Saint Louis de Montfort, God speaks through the elements. And the cowardly bishops, the spineless, betraying Catholic bishops all throughout the world say nothing. They are not reminding the people that we must do penance, that we must pray, that the Virgin Mary of Fatima's request, her request was almost a almost hundred years ago, and one of the key requests was for the Pope to do his duty, consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She asked for this. God wants it, because he wants the heart of his mother, who stood at the foot of the cross with the heart of Jesus, he wants her honored with him, to show her victory that by her will come the social reign of Christ the King and true peace. There's no other peace outside of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. It's it's a false peace. And certainly we see fulfilled the words of the Scriptures. Everyone will talk about peace, peace, peace. And that's the main theme of every new Mass, is peace and L-U-V. But where is it? Where is it? It's empty and has no meaning unless it's of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God is certainly knocking at the door. And our Western nations continually continue to turn their back on God. And God is kind. God is merciful. God is loving. But watch out when His justice hits. Watch out. Remember from the time that he instructed Noah to build the ark, God was not in a hurry to punish the world. Was it two years after? No. Was it 50 years after? No. It was a hundred years after. Then God had to punish the world because man just kept getting more corrupt. And uh, internet uh, in the means of the media and all the modern technology While modern man thinks he's all smart and smarter than all his ancestors, we have become lower in degradation, lower in perversity, lower in morality, lower in complete lack of faith, the dissolving of the family, the destruction of the woman, the destruction of the military, the destruction of of the hierarchy of the church. At every level, we just see everything decaying. And we see our age is ripe for a great chastisement as the Virgin Mary forewarned numerous times in her apparitions. So what does that mean for us? Oh, Father, that's a nice gloom and doom sermon. And uh, now thanks for depressing us. <laughs> so, uh, yes, these are uh, gloom and doom subjects, but, but that's the reality. And... Sometimes it takes gloom and doom to wake us up, to realize this isn't our home anyway. We are only travelers on this earth going home to heaven. Our real home is in heaven. 
And that's why we are here on earth. And why do we exist? Why do you exist? Little Michael, little John, little Olivia, why do we exist? And you know your catechism. You should, you should be able to answer this very easy. I am made to know, love, and serve God and to be happy with Him forever in heaven. And to serve God means to glorify God. In all that we do, we glorify God. So even, even like St. Lidwina, St. Lidwina of Sikinem, she, she was a girl that had a skating accident. She was from Holland, and she fell, and she, was, she, she fell on her spine, and she was paralyzed her whole life. How did she glorify God her whole life? She couldn't, she couldn't become a nun. She couldn't get married and have children. She couldn't do too much. But she became a saint and glorified God, how? By lying on her bed and offering her paralyzed life with Jesus crucified on the cross. So it doesn't matter what state of life we're in, if you're married, if you're a nun, if you're a priest, if you're a monk, of course it's easier in the religious life. But uh, every, everyone, whatever state we're in, whether you be students, little kids, boys, girls, men, old people who think the modern world just you know, sweeps old people under the rug and gets them out of view in the nursing homes and life is supposed to be forgotten without them. And euthanasia laws being passed more and more across the world, they're going to soon be a, a burden and get to get rid of. That's where we're at. But even the old, you have, a, you have such a tremendous vocation to help our Lord and Our Lady save souls from hell by offering your loneliness, your arthritis, your sickness, your discomfort, the, all the crosses of the so-called golden age. So uh, we are here to glorify God, to know Him, to love Him, to glorify Him. And Archbishop Lefebvre, he has these, these are great words. Listen to this. This, this. this is the heart of Archbishop Lefebvre, the heart really of a Catholic prelate, which every bishop, every, especially the Bishop of Rome, should desire. Here it is. He says, this is an extraordinary thing to meditate upon. I would almost say to contemplate. And, that, and it's this. Everything has been made for the incarnate Word. All the creatures, all that the good God made, all of mankind's history, and you're part of the history right now, in this exciting time of the church history right now, all creation, all the angels, the archangels, in short, everything was made for our Lord Jesus Christ. In preparation for our Lord Jesus Christ, this is normal, given that everything returns to God and everything is for God. Our Lord being God, God come among us, everything must necessarily be made for Him. And we do not deserve anything. We are truly only anything in the measure in which we are united to Him, in the measure in which we are going to Him, in which we are His. Uh, and this, this whole spirit of the Archbishop, to see everything, everything that exists is for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you ever, did we ever think of this? Did you learn this in your education, in your schools? Did you learn this on your mother's knee and with your dad working with him? This, this is the science of science. This is the wisdom of wisdoms. And that is, everything is for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even the Virgin Mary, her role was totally, her whole being and existence was the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as St. Thomas quotes St. Augustine, God loves, of all His creation, He loves those who have reason the most. But that's not what wins us heaven, because many with reason, like angels and men, go to hell. Because they misuse the gifts of God to offend Him. They misuse their mind to seek worldly things. They misuse their heart to love vanities. They misuse their bodies 
to desecrate the temple of God by uh, immoralities and impure dress and impure behavior. They use their tongues, their hands and eyes to offend God. So many with reason go to hell. But our Lord loves more than those who have reason, those who those men who are united to Jesus Christ by sanctifying grace. And, and, the, and above all creation, above everything, God loves His divine Son, the second person of the Trinity who became man for us. And this is, this is really what the Catholic faith is all about. And the Archbishop Lefebvre and, and all the saints of history understood this. Everything is our Lord Jesus Christ. And all, all, in the past, all the Catholics used to fight, used to work, used to pull together to crown Jesus Christ as King. King of their soul by living in the state of grace, obeying His commandments, striving for heaven. Jesus Christ King in their families <clears throat> by enthroning His sacred heart, by making the focus of their family the, the love and the commandments of God and the love of Jesus Christ, and the love of the neighbor, and families that are missionary, that would take care of the people, the poor around their house, or our block rosaries, which have been very powerful things in the missionary countries and in parts of the Western world. Block rosaries are just families that just get together and pray a rosary, or process through the streets praying the rosary. Or you just invite Catholics down the street you know that are maybe in Avasoto or have fallen away, invite them over and pray the rosary. That's called a block rosary. And you don't have to do much. Let the grace of Our Lady work. And uh, this is something really great. But the apostolic spirit as a family is powerful. And then uh, and it's normal that Catholics in our, their city, that Christ be king. And in the nation, that his laws and the Catholic faith be upheld. That should be normal in society, that the government be Catholic, that the leaders be Catholic. But we are, we are in an apostate age. But it doesn't matter. This is, this is our goal. And God put us in this crisis of the church, in this crisis now of our Catholic tradition. We are in an immense crisis, never seen before. And that means God will give you grace that's never been maybe poured out before to keep the faith, to spread the faith in a time when everything is set against the social kingship of Jesus Christ and the reign of Jesus Christ. Listen to these words of Archbishop Lefebvre. Uh, it's kind of warm in here. If you want to open the door or something, that'd be great. But uh, if, unless the kids get cold. Listen to these words of Archbishop Lefebvre. He's, he's speaking of Jesus Christ, King, but also priest and Savior. You see, this, this was the whole uh, preoccupation of Archbishop Lefebvre. It's a preoccupation that of any Catholic, and should be of any Catholic, especially priests and bishops. Listen to these words. If all things are made for our Lord Jesus Christ, everything must be oriented towards Him. And you see what a mind the Archbishop had. Politics, economics, the social order, everything must be pointed to Jesus Christ. And only in such a society comes true prosperity, true peace, true happiness, true uh, order. As a result, everything must also depend upon Him. And thus our Lord, by the very fact of His hypostatic union, has these three essential attributes of being. He is Savior, He is Priest, He is King. These are the three essential attributes which belong to our Lord. I would say not only through His nature, but through His essence and through His very being. Because He is through the Word. He is the second person of the Trinity. There is no other person in our Lord. There is only one person that is the person of the divine word, the verbum, the logos, the second person of the Trinity. So by the very fact that our Lord has unified himself to the human creature, has taken a body and a soul, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, God made man, is the Savior. There is no other. He is the priest and He is the King. And that is normal. That logically flows from His existence, from His being, and consequently from the will of God. And by that very fact, the world should be completely submissive to Him. There should not be any creature who is not submitted to our Lord and no nation which is not submissive to our Lord. And this is the whole Catholic program, the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is that, it is that program of God, the will of God, that has been attacked and overthrown by the revolution. Since the French Revolution in society, and this revolution entered the church at Vatican II. When now you have the prelates, even the Pope himself now, the last five popes, who, who slapped the Virgin Mother in the face, uncrowned Jesus Christ, stomp all over him, and uh, replace his true sacrifice of the Mass with a foolish, uh, uh, trivial meal, the new Mass, which, which attacks the real present and attacks the kingship of Christ. It's a whole new religion. And that's why Archbishop Lefebvre declared war against this new religion. And we want to stay Catholic. We want nothing to do with this new religion. And as you know, recently Bishop Fillet has, has been meeting. He has told people, I have not met with Rome. I have had no formal meetings. I have not seen the Pope. And uh, Rorati Cherry spilled a few beans, and the Dici had to come out and say, Yes, Dici is the website from Menzingen. Yes, Bishop Fillet did have the meeting in Rome last December with Ecclesia Dei. And uh, he met with the Pope briefly, and he had dinner and wine with Cardinal uh, Bishop de Noia. <coughs> So he's still dealing with the modernists, and he's still working with these records of the faith, and he's whining and dining with these men who uncrown Jesus Christ. He has not changed, he has not rejected his liberal statements, nor his liberal modernist doctrinal declaration. He has not, and, and, and what continues till, till now, till today, in this month, this month of May 2014, the, the good priests, the, the old athletes of Archbishop Lefebvre and Catholic tradition, like Father Beauvais in Paris, like um, Father Scott that used to be here uh, in Kitchener, and uh, all the old guard of Archbishop Lefebvre who's, who, who would have no shame to speak out against this new direction, they've all been moved, silenced, or expelled. And it's continuing. It's continuing. And those who are being put in place are those who are for the liberal direction. And we can say that the agreement has already been made on the society's part by the doctrinal declaration. And that's why the society has already embraced death. It's already embraced the modernist religion. But many priests and faithful will say, well, no, it's not. We do, we're not being told to accept the new mass. We're not being told to, to uh, teach Vatican II. Well, no, not yet. But once you've accepted to compromise on the principles, you've accepted to compromise on all the principles. And this is, um, listen to the words of a great bishop, Bishop Sigold, who was a friend of Archbishop Lefebvre and Bishop de Castromera at the council. He says these words, with regard to principles, no compromise is permissible. We have to insist on this point so that the faithful will understand there is a necessary contradiction between, between the world and the Catholic Church of tradition. Catholics cannot be up to date in a pagan world. And this is something I'll talk about after in the conference. Is, uh, the, the Catholic, as a Catholic, we got to understand we are not at all going to mix with this world because this world is antichrist it's built on the principles of antichrist it's it's working for the real antichrist and we cannot work with this world 
We have to live in it, but not of it. And our heart and our mind must be focused on heaven, on the kingship of Christ, and on the social reign of Christ the King, and the defense of the true faith of tradition. So what do you do? What do you do when we seem so small, when we seem so helpless, when we, we can hardly have, we can't even have mass, a resistance mass every Sunday because we don't even have enough priests right now who are or should be resisting this modernist wave, this modernist direction. But this is where God, this is where God wants us. He could give us a cathedral. He could give us a hundred priests. He could give us all that we would possibly desire. But that's, that's not His will now. And God is more pleased with you fighting in the trenches, with you sanctifying your soul, with you fighting and defending and keeping and growing in the love of God and the faith. He's more pleased with that than if we had a huge cathedral and a thousand priests and a thousand monks and a thousand nuns. This, this is the fight God has put us in now. And if we're so small, as Shakespeare says, you few, we happy few, we happy band of brothers, that is the, the few who have the faith anymore today. And so, the, but we're not, as Archbishop of Feb always used to say, we're not really few. Because we're holding the line of all the millions of saints and angels and all the martyrs who have kept the same faith they fought for the same faith. They died for the same faith. They defended the same faith. They professed the same faith that we hold. So we have all our big brothers and sisters in heaven, all the angels and archangels, all the, all the armies of heaven cheering you on to battle on, to keep the faith. And what a crown in heaven waits for those who are faithful. And that's why we... we we know the Virgin Mother, there is a special grace she has given to those devoted to her. That's why it's so important that you consecrate yourself to her. Hers is the victory. And she gave you a weapon, a 59 bullet machine gun to fire every day. And more if you can, if you have the time. The Holy Rosary. It's more powerful than we think. And beware of the old habit of what's called the devil of routine. Of uh, just praying the rosary while well, because, you know, I grew up praying it and, you know, I'm supposed to pray it. The priests always tell us we got to pray it. So, okay, we'll pray it. But, no, pray the rosary. Meditate on our Lord's life. Meditate on the great mysteries. Pray the rosary like you're kneeling with the Virgin Mary. Put your heart, or rather ask her heart to take your heart. So that you see our Lord's life through her eyes. And meditate on her, li on her life and our Lord's life through her eyes. And she's a great gift for our time, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. God wants her glorified. God wants her exalted. Because He humbles those who He, he humbles, He exalts. And no one was more humbled, mocked by the whole world than Jesus crucified and the most pure mother. And those two he exalts above all. So happy you also who share in the humiliation of our Lord now. The humiliation of standing at the foot of the cross, keeping faithful to tradition, having to appear disobedient, dissident, rebellious. But we're only just being faithful, that's all. Faithful to the, our Lord, to the magisterium of all time. That's, that's all we are about. Resistance, SSPX, resistance, Marian Corps, whatever you want to say. All we are is traditional Roman Catholics. That's all. We want to stand at the foot of the cross and not run from our Lord and not change Him and dilute Him. He is God. And we want to profess that by, all our, by our lips, by our life, by our heart, by our mind. So let's turn to the Mother of God and ask her to inflame us with the divine fire to really love Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ crucified, Jesus Christ King, Jesus Christ Priest, Jesus Christ is the only true Savior. And there is no other. And here at Mass, He 
He is here. He becomes truly present. That's why the cross, the tree that's planted here, is the, 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 the altar, the priest, the priesthood, the sacraments. It's all, everything is there to reconvert the world at the Mass. Everything is there. Christ the King, the true priest, the victim, everything is there. But we must do our part. And we must uh, work with Him and be conformed to Him and be united with Him. And for now, we battle on. What else can we do? We battle on. When we, uh, so let's ask the Mother of God to hasten her hour of triumph, which is going to come. It's going to come. And whether we see it or not, it really doesn't matter. And for us, it's to battle. For us, it's to be the soldiers in the trenches. And there's a great reward waiting in heaven for this, those faithful in this time. So remember the great words of our Lord. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor can a man possibly imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. And it's easy to love Him when everybody else loves Him. It's easy to love Him when there's processions in the streets and the president is there and the military is there and everybody loves our Lord and it's just... Everybody's doing it, so let's do it. But it's quite another thing to love our Lord when everybody's turning from Him. When the way of the world is going towards just sin and vice and ignoring Jesus Christ and mocking Jesus Christ. It is another thing to love our Lord when you're all alone. When the winter seems long. When the f bullets keep firing at you. It, it seems... That's another love. And that's the love God is asking of us. And we can't do it. We can't survive this hurricane unless we go to that, that bomb shelter, so to speak. That shelter of the mantle of the Virgin Mary. So get under her mantle. Like little children who gather under their mother's, under the mother's umbrella. Uh, seek rescue. Seek her refuge in her and through her we will persevere we will grow and we will save our soul and we will see her face to face and she will show us the very face of the blessed trinity and the face of jesus christ and all his majesty as king and uh, great will be the crown to be crowned before the whole human race and all the angels to have been one of the few to be faithful to Him in a time when the whole world is apostatizing. When all the media, all the movies, all the news, everything completely rejects and ignores Jesus Christ. So, little flock, keep fighting. Because uh, short are the time, as St. Paul says, the sufferings of this time are nothing Nothing compared to the glory to come. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.